There's nothing better than growing your own fruit for fresh eating and winter storage. If you don't think you have room for a fruit tree, then join me today on my small acreage orchard tour. I'll share with you tree spacing, placement, planting tips, and how I grow 48 fruit trees on our one half acre and have plenty of room for a large garden, farm animals, farm store, and our home. We have two quarter acre lots giving us one half of an acre of land to steward. I planted this orchard over 35 years ago. It has some well-established cherries, peaches, plums, apples, figs, apricots, pomegranates, persimmons, quince, pears, and pistachios. Most of these sit on less than one eighth of an acre that sit almost in the middle of one lot, with the garden up front and the goats and chickens, their shelter and hay barn in the back. The position of our orchard is on the west side and that offers our garden a little bit of that afternoon shade, which is really beneficial in our hot summers here. It just gives that garden a little bit of relief. A small area behind the chicken coop is our pomegranates, which offer the coop afternoon shade. This helps keep the chickens cooler in the summer. There's also a pear tree on the south side, again offering more shade. Trees in general will help cool an area where they've been planted, but we also have fescue and clover planted all over our orchard. This also helps cool that area. It's really nice out here during the hot summer months and the evenings. That little bit of coolness helps the animals, the garden, and the little humans that roam around here in the heat of the summer. Plus, it increases the humidity, which is relatively low in Southern Utah. And that humidity helps those plants survive our dry heat. The grass and the clover keep the mud down, stop erosion, and the clover actually feeds the soil. And when the clover's blooming, it feeds the bees. And they don't require a lot of water. I only have to water my orchard during the summertime about every two weeks, sometimes less, and everything is just fine. This is actually better because this improves the flavor of the fruit. Too much water washes out that flavor. And less water makes those roots go deeper, it makes a stronger root system and a healthier tree. I like to prune my fruit trees twice annually. The major pruning is done in the winter time. And then I do a summer pruning. This just helps keep them more manageable, smaller, and the summer pruning opens them up a little bit so that they have more airflow and less chance of disease. And it allows a little bit more sunlight in there, which improves the flavor of the fruit. When I originally planted my orchard, my tree spacing was 12 foot apart. But now that some of the peach trees are needing to be replaced, I'm spacing those fruit trees much closer. On the north side of my orchard, near the fence, my peach trees and my fig trees are planted only eight foot apart and the figs are only four foot off of the fence line. Now when you plant trees this close together, you need to keep them trimmed lower because they need the airflow and that sunshine to be able to keep the disease away and the fruit ripening. All of my fruit trees are a semi-dwarf. Standard trees are a little bit harder to keep maintained for a lower height. Semi-dwarfs are pretty easy to keep eight foot and that's easy to maintain, spray, pick, and prune. All of our older trees are much taller. That's how I trained them early on. But now that I'm planting new trees, I really like the idea of the shorter trees for easier maintenance. Spraying fruit trees is definitely easier when the trees are smaller as well. Winter time, I'll spray a horticultural oil two to three times a year to keep down pests like aphids, mites, and scale. I have a video on spraying your fruit trees with dormant oil, and if you wanna learn more about that, then I'll put a link at the end of this video. Some fruit trees have a life expectancy, with peaches being the shortest at around 18 years, give or take a few years. This will all depend on their environment as well. I have two original trees that are well past their prime and need to come out. Their fruit doesn't taste very good anymore, and they're hardly even productive. So if I'm gonna have something that takes up space, I want it to produce good food. Some of my trees are on the south side of the garden, a quince on the north, and other fruit trees are scattered throughout the yard, but the majority of them are in this orchard. I love big shade trees, but a tree that produces food and offers shade, that's a tree for a homesteader. In the center of the orchard, we put a patio fire pit for entertaining and family cookouts. And besides, the grandkids love it. All around the outskirts of my orchard, I grow a lot of small fruits on all of the fences, like grapes, blackberries, boysenberries, and goji berries. This is how we get a lot of food in a small amount of space to be self-sufficient. If there's a fence, there's an opportunity to grow vertically. 
Taking out established trees is a bit of a challenge and takes plenty of hard work. If we're going to be planting in the same place, all the roots need to go. If the tree was just old and not diseased, you can plant in the same place if all the roots have been removed. I'll be replacing the two older trees with a bare root Alberta peach and a pot of Canadian Harmony and these are both great for fresh eating and bottling. Bare root fruit trees are fruit trees without the surrounding soils. Their roots are exposed and they're dormant. You can usually find these midwinter to early springtime. Bare root fruit trees should be planted before they break dormancy, before they start to leaf out. You're going to have a higher success rate this way. Not that they can't be done at other times, but the success is going to be higher when they're dormant. Bare root fruit trees cost a lot less than a potted fruit tree, and I think they acclimate a lot faster to the native soil. And you have a wider variety of choices of fruit trees when you buy them bare root. When you get your bare root fruit trees, you should plant them right away. But if you can't get to them for a few days, then wrap them in some moist newspaper, sawdust, or even coconut core. And then you'll want to store them in a place that's not freezing, but it needs to be cool. Around 35 to 45 degrees is best. Mine arrived from Food Forest Nursery and I didn't have an extra minute to get it in. So I wrapped it in some of my garden wool and wet newspaper to help keep the roots from drying out for a few days till I could manage getting it in properly. I have a couple of hardy kiwis and an elderberry that's gonna go over by the duck pond. And then an Alberta peach that's gonna replace one of the peaches that we're pulling out. And a freedom apple that I'm gonna spell here on one of the fence lines. All of these bare roots look really good. They're nice and flexible. I'm starting to see some budding on them and even some leaf on them. That means I need to get them planted right away. Before planting your bare roots, let them soak in some water to help hydrate them for about an hour and no more than two. I also like to add a little bit of liquid kelp to the water, about four tablespoons per five gallons. Kelp helps all plants with stress. When you're preparing your hole for planting a bare root fruit tree, dig only as deep as the roots and at least twice as wide. Also make jagged cuts in the soil or make a square hole, especially if it's tight clay soil. This gives the new emerging roots an avenue to find their way out of the planting hole. Sometimes if the soil is so nice, loose and amended, the roots can just stay in that hole circling around, also known as teacupping. When you buy a fruit tree, most fruit trees are gonna have a graft union. And when we plant that tree, we want that graft union to face north, away from the most intense sun rays, because those sun rays can actually sun scold that graft union, causing the bark to peel. And when the bark peels, then insects can enter, causing you grief. You also don't wanna bury that graft union. You want the soil level below it. I read through Food Forest Nursery's guidelines on how to plant a bare root. I was really happy to see that in their guidelines that they too suggested to plant the graft union facing north. I just feel like this is a really good practice and done it for years. If you're looking for a really good source for bare root fruit trees and berries, check them out. I'll put a link in the description. Create a mound or a cone with the soil that the roots can drape over. Mycorrhizal fungi can be sprinkled right over the top of the roots before backfilling. The mycorrhiza helps stimulate root growth, increases water uptake, and nutrient uptake. When planting fruit trees, amending the soil really isn't that necessary, especially when planting bare roots. Bare roots adapt to the native dirt very well. If your soil is very poor, then you can amend it a little bit. About one gallon per planting hole mixed with the backfill soil will be enough. When backfilling, make sure that you don't have clumps. Clumps can cause air pockets that can cause your tree not to thrive. The finer the better so that it can feel in around the roots and make sure that your graft union is above ground by a few inches. Gently heal in the soil to make sure there's no air pockets. After I planted my tree and watered it in, I like to apply a layer of compost. But be careful not to put that compost over the graft union. Keep it away a little bit. Over time, as the tree starts to mature, that graft union will disappear. And at that point, I'll put compost right up to the trunk of the tree, and I've never had any problem with this. And I do this twice yearly to feed my trees. Once you have your tree planted, water it in to help hydrate it and to settle that soil in around those roots a little bit better. After that, you can water it about every two to three days. This will depend on your rainfall and your weather. 
As your tree starts to grow and develop a root system and become more established, then it'll require less water. A tree that's a year old or older really will only need water about every two weeks. Pruning can be done at this point. And it's a good idea because pruning your newly planted fruit tree will push more energy down into the root system because you won't have so much top growth. I prefer not to stake my fruit trees and I'll explain why. Fruit trees will naturally bend back and forth in the wind, especially at the base. And this creates a slight taper going up the trunk. Where the bend happens, the trees grow stronger. Staked fruit trees are usually staked about two thirds of the way up the tree. And this is where we change the natural physics when we start to stake. A stake tree won't bend at the base where we need that strength, but rather it'll bend above where it's been staked. That rocking will happen back and forth and make that tree strong at that point, sometimes creating a bit of a bulge. Once those stakes are removed, our strength is up high, not down low at that base. And so in strong winds, those trees can snap off at that base. So not staking your trees early on will strengthen the base of those trees, creating a healthier, stronger tree. Of course, there's some situations where you might have to stake a tree, but for smallest trees, especially bare roots, more than likely it won't be necessary. If you have a small space, even a few feet away from a fence where there's some sun, you can plant a fruit tree or even a row of fruit trees. Think outside the box and throw out those old orchard rules of planting distances. Be creative, look around, and I'll bet you'll find a spot for a fruit tree or two. Thanks for joining me in the orchard today and God bless.